Good day, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Right here, we are going to do something very essential. We are going to examine the topics, angles of elevations and depressions, and as well, we are going to consider bearing and distances. All of these compilations are wonderful, with examples well cited and illustrations that fit. So do not go anywhere. Stay with us, and we will be right back. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So right here we have angles of elevation and depression. Then as well, we are still going to tackle bearing and distances. So if you recall angle of elevation and depression, you know we have the concept of Sokatwa where we have our sine. You know our sine is actually opposite of our hypotenuse. Then we have our cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Then we have our tangent. You know that is opposite over adjacent. We are going to need um, this for application. So let's move on to the next slide. So very well, we can see angle of depression of A from B. So when you say something um, undergoes depression, you know, you are looking at uh, something from the top, right, downwards. So you can see the bird, right, looking at the photographer or the explorer, you know, from the top of the tree. So that is depression. So this is the angle of depression, right? Of course, I'm going to explain uh, all of these um, sides. You can see the angle of elevation of B from A. So elevation means something is coming um, from from you no know, from the bottom right is going to the top so you can see um, the explorer the photographer is looking at the bird on the tree so you can see he has he has to elevate his sight you know to actually look at the bird up there so let's have the next slide so we are going to kick off um, with angle of elevation you no know, the angle between the horizontal line which passes through the eyes of an observer and the straight line which joins the height of the observer to the object which is situated above the horizontal line. All of these words put together actually mean something and this is something very easy. So the angle of elevation is actually formed between the horizontal line. Now how do you get your horizontal line? You actually get your horizontal line when you are not looking up or you are not looking down, right? You are just looking straight ahead. That is your horizontal line, all right? Then when you are not trying to observe the object up there, you have your line of sight. Okay, so if you are at the top, right, this will be your horizontal line. Then you are trying to observe an object down here. This will be your line of sight, you know. You are looking downwards. So you can see that is how we actually derive um, the angle. So basically your angle is actually found between the horizontal line, right, when you are not looking up or down, then the line of sight. So you can see this is the line of sight. It's looking at the object up there, right. Then this is the horizontal line. When it's neither looking up nor down, just straight ahead of him. So that is for angle of elevation. Let's move ahead. So we have another scenario right here. So we can see someone in this tower. This is a very popular um, tower. So uh, we can see the angle of elevation is actually formed between the line of sight. So this is the line of sight uh, for this person, you know, looking upwards. As well, it also represents the line of sight from this person from here looking downwards, right? So that is a line of sight. Then you can see the angle of elevation being formed between the line of sight and the horizontal line. So the horizontal line is formed when the person is just looking straight ahead. Then this is the height, right, from the floor or from where this person is, right, up there. So we have our perpendicular height. So that is how we form angle of elevation. Let's have the next slide. So we have an example right here. So you can see um, in this case, the top of the lighthouse is 200 feet. So you can see um, from the surface of the ocean or of the water, right, to the top of the lighthouse, you know, it's actually 200 feet, you know, above the sea level. So the angle of elevation is 15 degrees. So you can see this is the line of sight from the ship to the top of the tower. So you can see we have line of sight, then we have our horizontal line. So you can see the angle of elevation will be formed between the line of sight and the horizontal line. And once we can do that, we'll just use our socatua, then we are good. So you can see from this provision that we have here, we have our angle as 15, then we have this. So if you recall your socatua, you know, using right angle triangle, so you see that from here, this is our opposite, you know, the line, the side facing the angle. So this is our opposite. We are giving opposite and we are asked to look for what? This is adjacent. 
to know the line connecting the angle and this angle 90 degrees so you can see so we have the opposite side supplied then we are looking for the adjacent side so we have opposite and adjacent which of the functions or identity carry uh, carries that so that is tan so tan theta equals opposite over adjacent so which is our opposite we have it as 200 then our adjacent which is unknown x and that's as well our horizontal line so we have tan 15 that is the angle produced you can use your calculator as well you know recording the soccer that we've done in the earlier clip then we have our solution so you can see what we have so you can see the horizontal line or the distance okay from the foot or from the bottom of the uh, tower to the ship is just um, about 746.5 feet right so that's how we solve for angle of elevation so we have to apply the same concept uh, regarding um, depression so let's have the next slide yes so the angle of depression the angle that is formed between the horizontal and the downward looking angle so just like i said you know this is how we are going to describe angle of depression so we say it is the angle formed between the horizontal so the horizontal is when the observer right here at the top is not looking upward or downward he's just looking straight ahead so right here now marks our horizontal right then when it's not looking downwards you know towards this place towards this logo right here so that forms our line of sight so the angle formed between this right and the horizontal that is where we have our angle of depression from the line of sight downwards it is from here you know the horizontal to the observer and the line of sight so we have it here horizontal line you know line of sight so this is where we have our angle of depression so uh, we have a further explanation regarding the line of sight you know um, a sight line from our observer's eye to the object being observed so if he's observing the object from the top you know downwards right that's where we have our depression you know, then if it's looking at the object, you know, from the ground, looking upwards, that still mark your um, line of sight. Then we have um, a horizontal line, a line viewed straight in front of you. Do you see that? With your eyes, neither looking up or downwards. So uh, for me, looking straight into the camera, right? So that is my uh, horizontal line. I'm not looking up. I'm not looking down. Do we see that right here? So you are looking at me as well. That is our horizontal line. So we have the next slide. So we have an example here. Uh, Maria is at the top of a cliff and sees a seal in the water. So this is the seal that we have right here. If the cliff is 40 feet above the water, so you can see the height of the cliff from the surface of the water, and the angle of depression, you can see the angle of depression is 52 degrees. What is the horizontal distance from the seal? So we are asked, what is the horizontal distance, okay, um, from the seal, right, to the cliff? So we are asked to look for this right so to the nearest food so we're asked to still um, you know carry out some kind of estimation or approximation so look at this right here how do you get your angle of depression first you have to determine where is the horizontal line so the horizontal line for maria you know not looking up or looking down this is a straight line right here so where is our line of sight as when maria is a lady right our line of sight is this coming down so where will the angle of depression be formed of course it is the angle formed between the horizontal line and the um, line of sight so we have it here and it's given as what as 52 so if you recall our application regarding geometry you know where here is 52 definitely we have here as 52 do we see that now so uh, from the from what is supplied right here this is the angle right so we have here as opposite what is the side facing the opposite the side is also what 40 feet we are giving that value then we have this so we are supplied with the opposite side right and the opposite angle but we are looking for what we are looking for the adjacent still right just like the previous question we handled so you can see this so we have to look for this we're looking for adjacent so we have a provision of opposite and adjacent so which um, identity are we talking about we're talking about tan theta so we have opposite over adjacent our opposite is 40 right over adjacent which is unknown so that is what we have here what is the angle of our theta that is 52 so we have tan 52 equals this then we carry out all of this solution then we have this so we have this as um x equals um, 31.3 you know we have x as this so roughly if we ask to bring it to the nearest foot you know when you round um, when you round down this you are going to have 31 so the seal is about 31 feet from the cliff so from year to year is actually 31 so it's just about application let's have the next slide so we have um, something to conclude with regarding elevation and depression so if you know the angle of depression or elevation 
right? You can calculate distances, you know, distance uh, from the observer to the bottom part or to the downward part or upward part of the object being observed. Then we have either the height, you know, the height right here, or length using what your tangent. So you call that your tangent is actually equals to opposite over adjacent. So we have height over length, you know, this representing our opposite side, then this representing our adjacent side, you know, we have angle 90 um, put right here. So if you know the height and the length of the two legs of the right angle, you can calculate the angle of depression. So there are questions whereby the angle of depression will not be supplied or elevation. Once we can determine this and this, then we can prefer solution to this. Right, so using the inverse of tangent, you know, arc tangent. So we have tan inverse, this is still the same thing that we are saying. So let's move uh, forward the next content on the slide. So we have bearings and distances, right? So bearings are angles, you know, measured clockwise from north. So if you want to measure your bearing, you measure from the north, right? So bearings are given in three figures. We actually uh, produce them in three figures. Right, so even if I have um, 50 to write 50 degrees, I don't just write 50 degrees, I should write 0, 50 degrees. Do you see that now? So even if I have 2 degrees to write, I won't write 2 uh, or 2 degrees, I'll just write 0, 0, 2 degrees. All right, so and they are given in three figures and are used by sailors and pilots to describe the direction they are traveling or heading for. Okay, so we can see the diagram shows three points A, B, and P. So we have A. We have B, we have P. So you can see we actually count from the north. So you can say from the north to A, we've traveled 45 degrees. Then from the north to point P, we've traveled 260 um, degrees. Um, to B, we have 260 altogether. So the angles are measured clockwise from the north line. So you must take note of this. When you are trying to walk around the bearings, you must move in the clockwise direction. So that means you are starting from north and you're heading for east then we go south, then to west, then we come back to the north. So we do not go and see clockwise. All right, take note of that. So the bearing of A from P is actually 45. So please um, take that correction from, from us. Then we have the bearing of B from P is actually 260 degrees. So you can see the bearing of B from P. All right, so I'm going to explain this um, concept of bearing of a point to another point and how we read and get it done. So we have the next slide. So we have the concept of a true bearing. You know, a true bearing is measured clockwise from north. Please do not forget, our measurement is done in a clockwise direction and we start from the north. All right, so the true bearing is actually this. So we have an instance right here. So you can see from north to south, we have 180 degrees. If you recall your quadrant, you know, from year to year is 90, from year to year is 180, from year to year is 270, from year to year is 360, 90, 90, 90, 90. Do we see that now? So from north to south is actually 180 degrees, but it does not stop there. From the south, it's traveled extra 30 degrees. So altogether, to this point, we have traveled, what, 210 degrees. So that is why we have this added up as 210 degrees. We have the next slide. So we just have some important things to learn about bearing. So angle clockwise from the north, you know, that is what I just mentioned earlier, and always three digits. So even when we have 75 degrees, we don't just write 75, you know, it is proper that we put 0, 75 degrees. That is an enlightenment for us. For some of us, we have 4 degrees. We don't just write 4, we write 0, 0, 4 um, degrees. So we can see lines north are parallel. So when you say north, north, so you can see they are moving in the same direction. So we can recall that. Then you can see um, se uh, sentence structure important, you know, look at this, right? So you can see our movement is also in clockwise direction, you know, moving from the north. You won't say because it's the shortest distance, you know, you move anti-clockwise. That is wrong. So you move clockwise, right? So the points you are heading for. So you can see this, the bearing of B from A, from A, you can see from B from A. So this is B, but we're actually picking it from A is actually 75 degrees. Do we see that? Then we have co-interior angles. If you recall our theorems in geometry, you know, co-interior, you can see that this and this add up to what? 180 degrees. So 75 plus this. So that is what we have right there. So then we have angles around a point. So take note of this. So you can see how far this has traveled. Then we see what is left right here. So basically you should know that the angle that has been traveled to this point right then if we have the remaining one travel from this point to this point is all 360 you know i mentioned 1990 1990 
So if I've traveled from year to year, I've covered the particular distance. And what is remaining to get to 360 is 105. So I add them up because to 360, you know, then I collect like things. And the teacher goes outside. Then I realize that what has been traveled from point uh, N, from the north, right, is actually 255 degrees. So these are very simple concepts that we should be able to relate with. So we have the bearing of A from B is what? Is 255 degrees. So when you say the bearing of A from B, you should take note of this. So regarding B is actually 255 degrees. So that is the solution that we have right here. We can have the next slide. So we have a man walks 10 kilometer east, then 6 kilometer north. Find the bearing you know, from the start to the finish point. So we just need to interpret um, this statement, you know, um, in the most um, simple way possible. So a man walks 10 kilometers east. So you can see he has a starting point, so he walks towards the east. So remember this, your north, your uh, east, your south, your west, then your north again. So at a particular point, the man starts walking, you know, he was heading for the east. So we have 10 kilometers to the east. Do we see that now? Then from that point where he has walked 10 kilometers, he now walked north. Again, it goes upward, so that is what we have. So from this provision, you know, recalling our Sokatwa, you can say right here, this is the angle, right? Then we have this. So this place represents the line connecting the two angles together. So this is your adjacent, and this is the side opposite the angle. So we have adjacent and opposite. What are we going to use? We are going to use tan theta. Do we see that right here? So we have tan theta equals to um, opposite over adjacent. So that is what we have right here. So we have 6 over 10. Then to actually get this angle right here, then we now say tan inverse of 6 over 10. We have theta as 33 degree, 31 degrees. However, take note of this. We are required to find the bearing from the start to the finish point. So from the start to the finish point. So this is what we want to consider, not just this points right here. This is what we want to consider. Then you can now see, how did we get this? You know, all of this is actually 90 degrees. So that will be 90 minus 31. Then that gives us 69 degrees. Remember, we don't write 69. We should write 0, 069 degrees. So that is what we have. Do not forget that this is just the introductory part of this lesson. The full content is available for you. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the MySchool website. Right there, you get to hit the subscription button and subscribe so that you can have access to the full video lesson and other wonderful topics as well. So don't forget to always hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and always tap on bell notification for you to get alert immediately we upload the next video content.